tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. If you deal with little particles, check Alt B to change the background color. We have two kinds of cones here in Maya. One is the NURBS cone, this is this one, and the other one is the polygon cone. And we need to go to special effects in order to use Arrow, the Bifrost fluid module. If you don't have it, check Windows, Settings, Preferences and the Plugin Manager. And the Plugin Manager you can just type in Bifr or whatever and you should see the Bifrost modules there are three all together and you need to load them in order to use this module here. So we have a cone and we click on arrow now with the cone selected and we have a little green box around it. When we run the simulation, it's a simulation now, uh, we don't see a change of the green box. This is very suspicious indeed and when we get closer with the key F frame, frame the object here, we don't see little particles either. At least I can't see any. So let's create a new scene and this time we use a polygon object and the cone becomes an arrow object. That means it evaporates something. And can we see something? Yeah, the green box expands and when we get closer we see this quite amazing simulation. It is much, much faster than the fluid effects which is uh, an older effect in Maya. New scene again and this time we use a disk because we can't use NURBS that's what we found out. You, let's use a disk which is uh, flat of course and uh, with the arrow module it doesn't produce particles although it's a polygon. So what's wrong with it? The box doesn't change. It's suspicious again. So let's animate this disk and try to find out what is, what has changed equals 10 times frame that just means it rotates in Y as you can see now to get a little bit motion done but no particles in the scene either and the green box which is unselected it looks blue this one um, is not expanding so suspicious again Let's uh, try the rotation in X, which is not the flat rotation, it's another one and ra random function, which you find in other tutorials, you can just do it with keyframes as well. The random function is just <laughs> quite interesting. So it rotates and <laughs> in, in two axes and now all of a sudden we see the particles. And the particles are being emitted, the arrow is being emitted depending on the motion of our disk, which you can of course hide and it still have will have the same effect here. A pulsating effect with this randomness. Now let's select the Bifrost arrow and the, in the properties container you find an important arrow dynamic value which is the master voxel size. It, if you set it to a higher value like 2 in this example, nothing happens with the box. It stays the same so no particle emission visible although we have that uh, vivid animation. When we reduce the 0 0.5 to 0 0.1 we have a very dense particle system. So for simulation speed you should find a compromise and for rendering you might really crank up the mass voxel size and cranking up means setting it to a very low value. You can set it to ridiculously low values and it takes forever to simulate. So this is real time on a machine with I think four cores so this can't be accelerated with the GPU as far as I know we just have to wait and the arrow module does have a cache which we don't cover in this tutorial. But let's have a brief look into gravity which is by default 9.8 when we reduce it to 2 and set the master voxel size to a compromise of 0 0.3 we get an animation which is or a simulation which is quite different 
we see the rotation now from the rotating disk but the arrow the steam does not move fast to the top because the gravity is much weaker interesting structures which you can by the way convert to meshes and uh, this uh, I don't cover in this tutorial and I don't cover the rendering in Arnold which is a little bit tricky interesting structures always with arrow much more than with liquid and having said this I wish you a very good day and bye bye